Good evening, everyone. My name is Sister John Gina Densmore, and I want to welcome you to this time of sharing. Whether you have been in the Bible a long time or if you're just trying to figure out who Jesus is, this space is for you. So thank you for joining. So before we get started in everything, I would ask for those of you who are viewing, let us know where you're viewing from. If you would go into the chat and just type your city, your state, your country, we know that we have people all over the world who have tuned into us. So thank you so much for that. We also have people online waiting to welcome you to this viewing. As most of you know, our attention this month has been on refocus on Jesus. And this week in particular, we are focusing on restoration. If you missed Tuesday's teaching, please go back and watch it. If you saw Brother Will, on Tuesday, go back and watch it again. So I'm just gonna try and pick up where he left off. Uh, the definition that he gave for restoration is to restore something, to bring something back to a former position or condition, to bring something back to a former position or condition. So tonight I'm gonna talk three parts about three parts of restoration very quickly. Part one is God's faithfulness and restoration. Part two is me and endurance in restoration. Now keep in mind, I want you to personalize part two. So it's not just me, John Gina and me, it's me, you and restoration. And then part three is others and restoration. So before I start with part one of God's faithfulness, I do want to play just this short um, video clip from tonight's reflection. Tonight's reflection has a link to YouTube of Promises by Maverick City. And as I cue this up, I want you to hear uh, the words that are being said. Now, I'm not gonna play the whole thing because that's part of our reflection tonight. So listen to these words. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Yes, promises for us. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may no blow, I'll happen. remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness. Now, as I said, I can't play the whole thing, but I do want you to go back tonight before you go to sleep, before you lay down, or even if you're working at nights, listen to the whole YouTube clip. It's Promises by Maverick City. So let's deep dive real quick into our scripture, Jeremiah 30, verses 1 through 3, and verse 16 and 17. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, write in the book all the words I have spoken to you. The days are coming, declared the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their ancestors, ancestors to possess, says the Lord. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plumbered you will be plummeted. All who made spoil of you, I will despoil. But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. So part one of the presentation tonight talks about God's faithfulness and restoration. So if you would, in the chat box, use words that describe God for you. So as you're typing that in, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, use words that describe God for you. As some of you are typing, you some may have said, he's a keeper. He's my redeemer. He's a king. He's loving. He's patient. He's kind. He's long suffering. He's powerful. He's good. He's a fortress. He's a refuge. He's my deliverer and he's a protector. 
And all of those words are true, but he is also faithful. God is consistent. He keeps his promises. If God said it, that's it. That reminds me of this commercial in the Chicagoland area. It's um, ABC Plumbing, Electrical. So in this commercial, there's usually two people. One person is complaining about something that went wrong at the house and they need to call someone to service it. The other person is saying, hey, I called ABC. So the first person says, oh, so it's done. Think about God. God is better than ABC plumbing because if God said it, it's done. It's done even before it happens. God's faithfulness reminds us of that. We look at the word faithful or faithfulness. It involves loyalty, allegiance to a person or a thing, constant, steadfast, and resolute. The Bible and other verses of scriptures reminds us that know therefore that the Lord, your God, is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Other parts of the Bible says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. Jeremiah reminds us, his word says, I will bring my people, Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them. Jeremiah reminds us that he will restore our health and heal our wounds. So part two, part two talks about me and endurance and restoration. So keep in mind, you're personalizing this. First Peter five and 10 in a new international version reads like this. And the Lord of all grace, I'm sorry, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and bring and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Restoration involves endurance in a struggle. It also revolves remembrance, remembering. Some of the old saints used to tell me, John Gina, if you have a memory, you have a praise of his restoration. My restoration means it, God brings me from one place to another for greater use, for better use. That's restoration, even in the struggle, even in the blemishes, even in the hard times, even in the difficult times, we have to know that we know that we know that God will restore. I used to have a job that was so incredibly stressful. I mean, the stress was so high that it really, it broke me. It broke my self-esteem, it broke my self-confidence. And when I was at my lowest, God whispered to me and said, I will restore you. And he did. So re remember in those difficult times that those blemishes, those struggles, that God will bring us back to a former condition and a former use. Yes, struggles and restoration go hand in hand. Look at the children of Israel. They were in captivity, which was a struggle. But God's promises and his faithfulness, he restored them back and gave them what he promised. The struggle didn't change the fact that God's love and power could restore them. The Bible says after we have suffered a little while, Christ will restore us, make us strong. He will strengthen us. He will settle. He will make us firm and steadfast. Think of your struggles as something that will propel you to restoration. Now, part three involves others, others and restoration, because restoration isn't a solo act. Restoration is about community. In Jeremiah, God says, I will bring my people, Israel and Judah, back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their ancestors to possess. So it wasn't just about one person, it was about the people. Our responsibility is to create a community 
of others who have been restored as well. Now, in order to do this, we have to love people. By the way, Pastor talked about restorative community last Friday on the Zoom call. And I'm going to talk about it again, um, how we should join the Zoom call before I get done. So back to our regular scheduled program. When we talk about restoration in others and community, this Christian walk that we are, are on, it involves others. We cannot, we were not meant to do this walk by ourselves. So we have to restore others. Well, Sister John Gina, how do I do that? So I'm gonna give you four steps as it relates to how to restore others. And two of those four steps are the same. So the first step is to remember that Christ restored you and others have restored you also. The second step is that when we talk about restoration, it has to be done with the spirit of love and humility. That means keep your critical comments to yourself. Now y'all gotta pray for me. Part of my job involves critique of people, processes, and things. But when, we, when I am involved in restoration of others, that critique, those critical comments, have no place for restoration. Now, how else can we restore others? We have to forgive. Now, forgiveness in itself is a series of Bible class, but you ask God, God, please help me to forgive because you've forgiven me. And then the fourth, as I said, this one is the same as number one. Remember, Christ restored you and others also restored you. So in closing, don't forget to listen to the YouTube clip tonight. The YouTube clip is on our devotion. The song is Promises by Maverick City. Don't forget tomorrow, Zoom, six o'clock on our website. You can find the Zoom link. Pastor will be talking to us and he, he's open for questions regarding this week's devotion. And please don't forget, God is faithful in restoration, that your struggles, your endurance moves you toward restoration and restoration is not a solo act. There are no long range Christians in this walk. And even a long range ahead, Tato, Tanto, as pastor reminds us. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we give God great praise for you being here. Have a great evening. God bless.